Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Sharon Moriwaki. In our show today, we'll talk about traffic. We'll check in with Panos Privaduros, not as a candidate for mayor, but as a traffic expert and engineer on the faculty of the School of Engineering at UH Manoa. With him, we'll take a look at two of the more seriously congested intersections in Honolulu and see what the science of traffic engineering can do to reduce that congestion. We'll also get a glimpse of his noted 20-minute solution, where he explains how non-rail traffic techniques would speed commute times to 20 minutes or less between all major destinations on Oahu, except for Waianae and the North Shore, where you can't do 20 minutes even by helicopter. No, I might be able to do that. <laughs> Just give me the helicopter. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> we'll also check in with Dale Evans, owner of Charlie's Taxi, and get her views on traffic from the ground up. If you hadn't noticed, you know, we in Oahu spend an enormous amount of time sitting stuck in traffic, and it's getting noticeably worse. We have more cars all the time, but we have not updated our roadway and our traffic systems to keep up. Rail or not, people are beginning to understand that without a new traffic approach, we're headed for total gridlock. While we wait, congestion eats our productivity and undermines our economy. Panos Privaduros, who's a nationally respected traffic engineer, says there are things we can do. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Panos has identified about a dozen seriously troubled intersections in Honolulu. We'll go to two of them so he can explain what's wrong and how each can be fixed to substantially reduce the congestion there. Can Panos and the modern science of traffic engineering help us on this? Let's see. The first troubled intersection is at Nimitz Highway and Alakea Street, across Aloha Tower and the power plant. The problem is that traffic coming from EVA piles up in the twin left turn lanes that give access to the downtown area. The lineup is so big that for at least two hours every day, the traffic spills over to the through lanes and squeezes Nimitz down to only two working lanes. One congestion becomes two. The left turn traffic piles up and the through traffic to Kaka'ako and Waikiki also gets stuck. It's terrible. We asked Panos what to do. You cannot really shoehorn any form of an underpass unless the receiving street is very wide, well over three lanes, four at a minimum. Here we have the benefit of having one, two, three, four, five lanes across. So it's very easy to essentially close two of them for the underpass to come up and you still have three useful lanes and yeah. it's all set. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be coming out in the middle of the street right here. Because once you go underground, you can do whatever you want. You can have a whole roundabout underground in theory but where do you get into the tunnel and where you come out of it? Having a sealed two-lane tunnel is, a, is not very difficult. And you know, when we talk about tunnel, particularly down here on Ala Moana, we are not talking about a bore tunnel that, you know, uh, a machine goes in and punches a tunnel. It's a cut and cover, which is very easy to do. The geomembranes protect either leaching or water penetration coming in, yes. It's a problem in the section because this is one of the main ways to come to downtown. So as we say, the demand for it is high. A lot of cars come within the rush hour in the morning, particularly in the morning. We already have established a twin, a double left turn. However, the demand is such that this left turn doesn't work very well. It spills out on the regular lanes. And just one block downstream, we have also the left turn which is actually kind of going straight to Halekau Villa. So these two work in the same time. The moment we got green over here right behind us and Halekau Villa now has the green. So it's coordinated to work together in unison. However, for every 100 seconds, only about 25 these guys have green or less. The rest of the time, 75% of the time, they're stuck waiting in a red light. That's not very productive particularly early in the morning when you have this boom of traffic coming in. So the solution is backtracking back to Nuanu. We have a one lane depression on the pavement. So we enter a mini tunnel and we come down here underground 
and there is a single left turn coming into town and one straight through going to Halekau Villa and coming up right next to the federal courts. And that becomes now a win-win-win situation. All those people that turn, they take this uh, tunneled lane and they never have to stop anymore. Not 75% of the time red, 0% of the time red. So all of them on the average are gonna save between one and a half and two minutes every morning right here. It's a win situation because the other side of Nimitz doesn't have to stop anymore for them. That's the problem with left turns. In order to make a left turn, the opposing flow has to come to a complete stop. This time now, since the vehicles are going underneath, the other side doesn't have to stop. And because a lot of traffic has gone underneath, the whole situation also has become safer because conflicts between cars and cars and pedestrians are not there anymore. That's why we say win, win, win. All the movements are benefiting from this treatment. The rough price for it would be in the neighborhood of $50 million, $50 million. And uh, the duration, if we get a complete team that knows how to do this work, would be a minimum of four months and uh, with a deadline of about six months. In order to solve congestion, you have to, to, to solve the access points for the city. Exactly, and that's a big problem. And sometimes, you know, it comes into the rail discussions that they say, oh, okay, you can bring the cars to town. Then what are you going to do with them? So it is critical to have proper management in the downtown area, which means that the traffic lights really need to work properly and we have to have very strict parking prohibitions for at least 90 minutes in the morning and in the afternoon when this movement needs to come in and out. And right now we can see in downtown right next to us, there is a hodgepodge of parking activity that is not appropriate. Many times the Pali Highway on the other end clogs into town because there are too many drop-offs in the middle of Bishop Street. You cannot have that. A problem with uh, critical intersections is that they have very busy left turns. The more time you give to the left turns right now behind us, the more time you take away from the very heavy through movement. So it's a lose-lose situation. So either you need to give an underpass to the left turn or a quicker way to the through movement. Now, this particular case, we prefer to solve the problem with an underpass for the left turns. But as you will see in the, all the rest of the intersections, we prefer to do a much simpler straight down and up underpass for the through movement. So this is a before situation of what we have now. Uh, the proposed solution is actually an one lane underpass. I have it here in the, in the actual design. It starts a little further out because it's more convenient. What you have essentially is a down ramp. So these vehicles disappear essentially here. They go one story down and then they turn into Alakea or they go straight out to Halekau Villa. A very simple solution and the advantage of having this is that huge amounts of congestion magically disappear. The second troubled intersection is at Pali Highway and Vineyard Boulevard. The problem here is that every morning thousands of motorists from Kailua, Mauna Wili, Nuuanu, Paoa, Pacific Heights, and Liliha pile up on the Pali Highway, which becomes Bishop Street as they approach downtown. At the same time, Vineyard is very busy, particularly the left turn from Vineyard to the Pali Highway townbound. The traffic lights have a very hard time coping with all this traffic. As a result, traffic piles up on the Holly Highway for at least a mile. We'll see what recommendations Panos makes on this one. Uh, this is a very troublesome intersection coming down from uh, everywhere, from Kailua, Nuanu, Paoa, Pacific Heights, all of them concentrate down here to come to downtown. In addition, this is the second major left turn from all the East Honolulu. The first is the twin left turn at Punchbowl. The next big left turn is right here. So we have two major conflicting movements, all of them trying to come down Bishop Street. 
it's too much to ask for a traffic light to do. Uh, there isn't so much that the little controller of the traffic light can do when you have so much traffic. It just gives the greens wherever, you know, uh, there is a lot of traffic, but there is too much traffic. There are two solutions to it, or three. Tell everybody to stay home and not come down to this intersection. Not a solution. Add a couple of lanes. Not a solution. The entire intersection is all built up. Third, go under or over. Now, going over, it actually is maybe easier, but it has foundation problems, and of course it has aesthetic problems. It looks ugly to have an overpass in the middle of a fairly, you know, appealing intersection with trees and everything around it. So what's the correct way to do it? The same that we do it in Washington DC, our nation's capital, Singapore, Taiwan, London, you name it. Underpass, underpass. You go under and it looks much cleaner. Now again, over here, we don't plan to go the entire intersection underneath, only one lane per direction. One lane per direction is good enough. So we're gonna take one lane out of Pali Highway, the one next to the left turn, sink it down and bring it on the other side. The beautiful thing is that the median is generous, so we can do this. Uh, so one lane per partial of the median. So what is the advantage of this? The advantage of this is that once you decide to use the underpass, you never have to stop. But because you never stop, the equivalent of that lane is like having three lanes with a traffic light. That lane is not going to have a traffic light. You go straight under the intersection and out on the other side. It's a beautiful wind situation. Now, what I happen to do with that is that I don't need all that green light for Pali Highway. Ergo, you give it to that left turn which operates behind our back right now. So those guys get more green so they don't have that huge pile up. Win, win. Then this intersection in the morning because of the school, it has a lot of pedestrian traffic. Guess what? Right now at the same intersection, we were able to put a thousand to two thousand cars under and not on top of the intersection. That puts down their overall risk of the intersection. Less opportunity for conflicts with pedestrians and other cars. So safety goes up. So it's a win-win-win situation. Win for the Pali Fox, win for the Vineyard Fox, and win for the pedestrians that use the intersection. And all of that for $15 million. It doesn't get any better than that. So we need to start planning some of these, at least four immediately, six and then up to 12 for the entire island of Oahu. Both directions of the palace. So in the afternoon, we have the opposite problem. There is a pile up of traffic out of downtown and onto the windward side. And that's the traffic I want to serve in the afternoon. It's the same underpass with a divided line. So uh, one lane per direction. Perhaps we could do left turns underground. You don't want to do too many left turns in a tunnel because it's a sharp term, turn to begin with. And second, at one level below now, you have start having a lot of conflicts and you have all these walls of the tunnel and then you cannot really merge the left turns into the through traffic. So it's an either or. Either you're gonna do the left turns or you're gonna do the throughs. It is far cheaper and safer to do the through movements over here. The only left turns that we did, as I mentioned, was down at uh, Nimitz and Alakea because that's the utilization pattern. Most of the traffic turns into town, so I try to accommodate that. And it's actually one left turn. Mm. Going Halekao Villa is actually a straight shot. Mm. It's not a turn.
The third troubled intersection, which we didn't get to see, is the five-way intersection at Kapiolani Date and Komoku Streets near Iolani School. The traffic lights work and left turns are prohibited, but this intersection is nevertheless a major choke point for at least two hours a day. It delays traffic in every rush hour, morning and evening, with ripple effects all over the system. Do you know this intersection? Do you have suggestions on what can be done? Write to us at thinktech at hawaii.rr.com and let us know your recommendations. We'll pass them along to Panos and to Mayor Peter Carlisle. We'll also cover Panos' 20-minute solution, where he explains how non-rail traffic techniques would speed commute times to 20 minutes or less between all major destinations on Oahu. How can you transform all the major commutes on Oahu, including the ones that are 75 minutes today, couple late to the UH, to roughly 20 minutes? Well, we cannot do all of them, but many of them. And to cut to the chase, the answer to all of this is yes. It can be done. I air to downtown 20 minutes, Hawaii Kai to downtown, Kapolei to downtown, UH Manor to Kailua, Waikele or Waipio to downtown in 20 minutes in a bus. 12 years from now, we can have that. Parenthetically, for less than the money than the rail. So that's my overall budget, rail or less. Uh, here is a graphic from the 2000 census that shows how many miles of roadway we have per 1,000 people. Guess who takes the cake? Honolulu. 1.5. Again, an outlier. We have too few lanes for our population. Real solutions. So here it is. How do we do it? Immediate solutions. Pearl Harbor Ferry. Underpasses, like the one I showed you. Nimitz Viaduct. Traffic signal optimization. In-town BRT and the Middle Street Merge Fix. Longer term, 10 miles of hot lanes, not 20 miles of rail. Alexander to Pali Highway Tunnel. Complete plan for, that's not part of the equation, it's a suggestion. We need to see if we can actually have light rail on the old Oahu Railway, because it's very promising. And Pearl Harbor Ferry and Cut and Cover Tunnel. We wanted to go further on this, so we spoke to someone else who knows about local traffic congestion from the roadway up. Dale Evans, the owner of Charlie's Taxi. She knows. Here's what she had to say. So what's been done about the traffic in the past few years? Anything? No. We don't have, we have either obsolete or a lack of any significant data so that we can actually have something in order to know what we're going to do. So if, we, if we're going to do something, number one, government and the population, our public, has to recognize that there must be traffic congestion mitigation plan. There is none. The HPD and the um, State Traffic uh, Highway Division and the Traffic Light Control Center, they're all operating ad hoc. The tra they talk about a traffic control uh, center which is, you know, undefined as far as what the public uh, knows about it. And in any event, our signal uh, traffic system is dysfunctional. I learned a lot from Panos mm -hmm. the other day. Um, and one of the things I learned is that you have to look at every intersection by itself. 
you have to examine and analyze that intersection and see what tools you can bring to bear to fix the congestion right there. Mm -hmm. and, and you do this in a, in a priority with due respect for the fact that every intersection has some effect on the system in general. Mm -hmm. Some intersections have a greater effect than others. You talked about underground mini tunnels. Mm -hmm. um, have you, are you familiar with that plan? Uh, what do you think of it? Uh, what, what role would it play in this process you're talking about? Well, um, they exist in every place other than Honolulu. <laughs> I mean, you know, you go around the world and they already exist. So, I mean, it's like, duh. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, everywhere. Well, let's talk about what, what you think ought to be done in terms of affirmative steps. Mm -hmm. You know, you're familiar with how, how the traffic gums everything up and how there's congestion all over this island and increasing. So what can, what would you do if you were queen for a day, mm -hmm. what would you do to fix it? The people of Honolulu, of Oahu, are not in control of their own destinies because they are, the process is being led by neighbor island legislators who have no accountability for the taxes, for the congestion, for the conditions and the performance of Oahu's transportation infrastructure. That's one of the problems. Okay. Secondly is that we really do not have a traffic congestion mitigation plan and we don't have a traffic planning model. Uh, experts have come here and told us you don't have any data, you don't know where you're going to go because you, you're working in the dark without knowing um, <clears throat> what is going to work because we just don't have the data that would lead us to solving these problems. Data the like the number of cars that the, pass a certain yeah, point. In order to set priorities and to know the significance of the problem, we really need to have data and focus on how we're going to proceed in this process. And the AMPO process is necessary because that's how the state and the county work together on transportation. So if we're talking about airports, harbors, and highways, we really need to go at it from a state level, but it has to be managed and uh, dictated by Oahu uh, legislators, not neighbor island legislators. Mm, yeah, where the problems are different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they have better roads. Did you notice? That's true. I have. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, you know, the pothole problem that everybody was complaining about a few years ago, we still have it. Yeah, right. So. It, well, it's because it's so superficial. I think that panels, you should get panels to explain to your listeners about the uh, road reconstruction, what it really is. People think that patching potholes is repairing the roads. It's not. It's, it's costing us six times more to the taxpayers because we're doing these very superficial overlays instead of fixing the problems for a long term. Cosmetic. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. So when you're finished with this, what kind of data do you have in your pocket to go forward and what kind of plan, what does the plan say? Well, I think that if, we, first of all, if we commit ourselves to those, uh, to that goal, that those things, uh, I mean, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. So basically those models are already in existing and we can just uh, apply them to our local needs. So, so it's a matter of taking the tool case out yes, uh -huh. and looking at the inventory mm -hmm. of tools and then figuring out what tool should be used for what problem at what intersection or roadway. And also to set the priorities. We need to know what is the priorities, how much of the, how the money is going to be spent so that the public will know what they're investing in and that they will get a return because people will report where they are in terms of their success or failures. We have nothing like that now. Well, I hope the uh, people who are just taking office and running for office are going to hear you and listen to you and, uh, and take steps on this. Otherwise, we'll be having this conversation year in and year out. As you know, in Hawaii, there's so much talk and so little action, we get locked up somehow. When we consider that, yes, there are options, and the effects of even modest traffic engineering can be both prompt and profound, we can be more optimistic and proactive about reducing congestion. If we apply traffic engineering principles to our troubled intersections, we can improve the system as a whole, 
and reduced congestion all over Oahu at a relatively modest cost. Wouldn't that be great? Yes, it would. <laughs> <laughs> On October 28th at the Plaza Club, Think Tech and the Hawaii Venture Capital Association will present a luncheon program called Can There Be a Renaissance for Agriculture in Hawaii? Check it out on thinktechhawaii.com or hvca.org. And join the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum at its meeting at 11 a.m. on October 29th at the State Capitol, room 309. You'll hear what's happening in energy and energy efficiency. Join us. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Thanks to the Scheidler Family Foundation. The Scheidler Family Foundation is an active supporter of a number of educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks to Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates, Miko on Maui and Helco on the Big Island. They are deeply committed to supporting the communities they serve. We are very appreciative of their support. And thank you, Galen Ho. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company, which is also deeply committed to Hawaii. We greatly appreciate Mr. Ho's support. And thanks to the High Tech Development Corporation. HTDC is a state agency dedicated to developing Hawaii's high-tech industry, diversifying our economy, and providing quality jobs for our people. We appreciate HDDC's work, and we are thankful for its generous support. Well, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 all week. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting opportunities on Think Tech on OC16, take a look at our site, thinktechhawaii.com. It would be great if you could be a sponsor. We'd love your support. I'm Jay Fidel. Thanks for joining us on Think Tech. I'm Sharon Moriwaki. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.